Although they've had a bumpy ride in recent years, emerging markets are still the primary driver of global economic growth. However, a recent survey found that only 11% of people who use products made in emerging markets actually invest in them. The same report found that this is partly because investors' tendency towards home bias, which is when we invest our money in our home stock market because the companies there feel familiar and safer as a result. But as we'll see, this means that we may be missing out on some great long-term returns. So in this video, we'll look at what emerging markets are, whether they're worth investing in, and the risk associated with them. I will then review the emerging market index funds available on Vanguard to see which one would be a good investment. So let's first look at what emerging markets are. There isn't a standard definition of what an emerging market is, but they're usually fast-growing countries considered to be in the process of becoming developed economies. They often have large young populations, a rising middle class, and the potential for strong economic growth. However, because we don't have a formal list of criteria of what defines the country as an emerging market, there isn't a definitive list of emerging market countries. For example, the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, classifies 96 countries as emerging economies, while the stock index provider MSCI lists 27 countries in their Emerging Markets Index by mainly looking at how investable they are. So here are a few reasons why I think that emerging markets are a great investment opportunity. The first reason is that emerging market economies have a higher growth potential than developed markets, which can lead to higher than average returns. This chart shows that historically, emerging markets have experienced higher economic growth compared to developed markets, and the IMF expects this pattern to continue. In fact, according to a study by McKinsey & Co, the growth of emerging markets is expected to contribute to 70% of global economic growth by 2025. As a result, many emerging markets have provided investors with outstanding returns, and they will continue to do so over the long term. Here's why. As these economies develop, more and more people move to cities, and seek jobs in more advanced industries. Consequently, their incomes increase, which in turn shifts their spending pattern. Instead of spending most of their income on basic goods and services, like food, they start spending more on things like travel, computers, cars, and so on. In fact, the same study by McKinsey & Co. found that 50% of the global consumption will be coming from emerging markets by 2025. At the same time, as the population increases, there is more demand for infrastructure, services, housing, etc. What this means is that the businesses in these countries will need to meet the growing demand of the rising middle classes, which in turn will boost their profits and those of their investors. Now, what's interesting is that the 27 countries in the MSCI Emerging Market Index represent about 15% of the global market cap, but they contribute to almost 50% of the global economic output. So they're massively underrepresented in terms of market cap relative to their contribution to the global economy, which means that there is a lot of room for that market cap to grow. However, growth is not the only factor to consider here because the price you pay for investing in emerging markets matters as well. But current valuations for emerging markets suggest that they are undervalued and long-term investors should be able to benefit from some decent long-term returns. And lastly, emerging market equities provide great diversification for your portfolio because they offer exposure to businesses and geographies that have little in common with each other. Now, although emerging market economies can offer greater returns to investors due to their rapid economic growth, they are considered a very risky investment due to factors such as political instability, currency risks, and dependence on international capital flows. Poor regulations, corruption, and unstable leaderships contribute to the risks of investing in emerging markets. They can have economic consequences that could negatively impact businesses in those countries and ultimately affect investors' returns. Also, when it comes to investing in emerging markets, another important important aspect to take into account is currency risk because a country's currency is tied to its economy. When the economy is growing, typically the currency increases in value, but the opposite can happen too, which means that your returns can fluctuate depending on the value of the emerging market's currency. For example, this chart shows the exchange rate between the pound and the Brazilian currency over the last decade, and you can see just how much it has decreased in value. At the time of the video, one pound is worth 7.5 Brazilian reals, but it was worth 2.5 10 years ago. So all assets priced in Brazilian currency have more than halved in value, which didn't benefit British investors. However, if the situation was reversed, the rate movement could have led to some good gains. At the same time, emerging markets can be more sensitive to changes in global financial conditions, especially in the US. Because if the economy in developed markets takes a bad turn, this will influence how much money flows into emerging markets, which will have an effect on their local currencies. This can have serious consequences to their economy and to investors. As a result, emerging markets are typically classified as high-risk investments, and investors who decide to invest in them should expect very volatile returns. This table shows the performance of emerging markets compared to a 
develop world index. From this comparison, we can see that the returns of emerging markets are sometimes double or even triple those of developed markets. However, the price swings also highlight just how volatile they can be. Despite the volatility that comes with them, I do think that for long-term investors, the potential rewards outweigh the risks. And one way we can minimize our risk and increase the chances for higher returns is by investing in an emerging markets index fund or ETF. So now let's look at the emerging market index funds available on Vanguard to see what the difference between them is and which one would be a good investment. But before I do so, please remember that I'm not a financial advisor and nothing in this video constitutes financial advice. Also, let me know in the comment section if you're already invested in emerging markets or whether you think they're a good investment or not. This is a table of the three emerging market funds available on Vanguard. Let's start off with the ESG Emerging Markets All Cap Equity Index Fund. This one aims to track the performance of the FTSE Emerging All Cap Choice Index, which is composed only of companies that meet certain environmental, social and governance criteria. Also, it includes companies of all sizes, not just large and mid-caps, hence the extra diversification. It's slightly more expensive than the other two funds and it has the same risk level. However, before going into further detail, the reason why I wouldn't pick this fund now is that it's very new and it doesn't have a good tracking record. I don't know anything about its past performance. Also, it's quite small. It only has 60 million pounds worth of assets under management. These things combined can affect how well it tracks the index. Although I do like the whole sustainability idea behind it, it doesn't provide me with enough data to make an informed decision. So I will exclude it from my list. Moving on, the Emerging Markets Stock Index Fund and the FTSE Emerging Markets Usage ETF are very similar. But the main difference between them is the indices they track. The Emerging Markets Stock Index Fund aims to track the performance of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, while the FTSE Emerging Markets Usage ETF seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Emerging Markets Index. Now, the main difference here is the countries considered as emerging by each of these index providers. This table gives a country breakdown of the two index funds. As I mentioned earlier, the MSCI Emerging Markets Index covers 27 countries, but the FTSE Emerging Markets Index uses a different method of classifying emerging countries, so it only lists 25 countries as emerging. While the MSCI benchmark includes Poland and South Korea, FTSE Russell regards these countries as developed markets. However, one thing that pops out is just how much of the emerging markets universe is accounted for by only five countries. For example, companies in China, South Korea, Taiwan, India, and Brazil account for almost 78% of the MSCI index value. So a lot of the movement that we see in these emerging markets indices will be dependent on these four or five countries. In terms of performance, the Emerging Markets Stock Index Fund has returned an average of 7.3% per year over the past 10 years, while the FTSE Emerging Markets Index has returned 6.14%. So the Emerging Markets Stock Index Fund has done slightly better. Now, they all have the same risk level, the difference in fees is marginal, they've both been active for a long period of time and have a good amount of assets under management. However, the FTSE Emerging Markets ETF provides some extra diversification because it includes an extra 400 stocks. The base currency of the MSCI fund is the British pound, so it's already hedged against currency fluctuations, while the other one is the US dollar. And lastly, one of them is an index fund, while the other is an ETF. What this means is that with the index funds, dividends will be automatically reinvested into the fund, while with the ETF, they will pay you in the form of cash and you will have to reinvest them yourself. Also with the ETF, you'll have to buy fixed shares of it, while the index fund allows you to buy fractional shares. Now, in terms of which one I think is the best investment, at the end of the day, regardless of which one I would choose, it's important to keep in mind that their top holdings are very similar. However, for me, the Emerging Market Stock Index Fund is probably the better option. It's slightly more expensive, but it's performed better. It offers exposure to the South Korean market, and also it's an index fund and not an ETF, so I wouldn't have to worry about reinvesting my dividends. And lastly, another important aspect for me is that its base currency is the pound, which works in my favor since I'm based in England. So this is my opinion on investing in emerging markets. They are a great way to increase your long-term returns as long as you can stomach the extra volatility. And talking about higher long-term returns, check out this video for another easy way to add some growth to your portfolio.